Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today. I've brought along a whole pile of gear with me, and uh, I'm going to be field testing the new uh, Sigma 85 millimeter F1.4 Art Series lens, comparing it with the Tamron 85 millimeter F1.8 VC lens. And so we should be able to get a sense here in a controlled environment of uh, how uh, sharp these lenses actually are and how they compare against some of the, the chief competitors to them. Now, I want to preface what I'm about to say by saying I really, really appreciate those who do uh, chart testing. And, and I personally refer often to uh, things like Brian Carnathan at the Digital Picture and uh, his chart test, and even some of the sensor results and lens results uh, from the chart testing see at DxO Mark. And so I certainly appreciate what they do because it provides a consistent standard um, that removes a lot of variables from the equation. That being said, I think that uh, sometimes we can get too caught up in chart test and kind of neglect how a lens performs out in the real world. So kind of what I do is more about real world reviews as a photographer. And so as a result, I've come to the world's sh shortest downhill ski slope self-proclaimed here at Mount Molson in Petawawa in the community where I live. As you can see, winter has officially arrived here a little bit early. And, and so the reason why I like this particular setting is because of being a little bit high up, I have a pretty, really wide angle of view to shoot at here with a lot of texture information that is very demanding when it comes to uh, looking at the overall resolving of these fine textures. So this will give us a real world test for these lenses and I'll do it in a controlled environment using uh, tripod, 10 times live view focus, mirror lock up, um, two second delay, all of those things to make sure that all lenses have a fair shot here. And so let's jump in, let's take a look at what we discover. Okay, we'll start off by comparing the Sigma 85mm ART on the left and then the Tamron 85mm f1.8 on the right. So first thing to note is that if we look into the corners, you'll see that there is definitely more, more vignette on the Tamron than there is on the Sigma. It is exceptional, even wide open f1.4. Really, there's very little here that would need correction or profile correction. It's really quite flawless. Second thing to note is that the Sigma is a little bit shy of a true 85 millimeters. You can see that it frames quite a bit looser than what the uh, Tamron does. And so, I mean, not necessarily a big deal, just something to note that you're gonna get a different framing than uh, a typical 85 millimeter lens. So here's our focus point right here. These have been 10 times live view focused. And so as we can see, looking at the very center, there's really not a lot to distinguish them. They're, I would say, essentially equally sharp at the point of focus. If we move out towards the edges, um, we can see that I would say there's a slight bit more texture on uh, the Sigma um, on the left. And so if we look towards the extreme edge here, um, you know, not a lot to distinguish them really that I can see. They look roughly similar to my eye. There may be a hair more contrast in the Tamron image, but uh, at the same time, I do also note they have a different color rendering with the Sigma being a little bit warmer compared to the Tamron that's a little bit cooler. Um, and we can't really look too much at the front of this image in that uh, it may be a little bit outside of the depth of field. Although it looks, you know, they look sharp here and I would say sharpness looks roughly about equal. Now if we equalize things, um, same shutter speed, same aperture f1.8. Let's take a look here at the center. Of course, the uh, Tamron is still wide open, Sigma now stopped down a bit. And so here in the center of the frame, uh, not a big difference. Let's look at the right side this time. And I would say there is a little bit more texture here on the Sigma. And of course, the Tamron's being impacted by vignette some where the Sigma is not. Um, but uh, certainly a very sharp performance from both lenses, but I think that overall I see more texture and sharpness in the Sigma image on the left than I do in the Tamron on the right. I will say, however, that it's not necessarily hugely different. Here I see an improvement, I would say, for the Sigma over the Tamron, but in field use, um, the differences in these lenses are going to be more slight than what you might expect. And again, I think we're at the point of diminishing returns. Uh, 
there's just a lot of really, really sharp lenses out there now. And so if you're expecting one to rise head and shoulders above another, um, you may not see that all that much. Once again here, this is now at f2, uh, and as I look at the center, I'm having a hard time making a visual distinction. Here I would say there's a little more texture information on the Sigma, and um, towards the edge, um, they're really roughly equal. At this point, um, you know, Infinity is not fully in focus on the... Um, the Sigma, however, it looks fairly sharp on the Tamron. It also seems to be a little bit more contrast in the distance on the Tamron's image, even though they are uh, both focused at the same point. Let's look down here towards the bottom, and um, I'm not really seeing a much of a difference here overall. Now at f2.8, and uh, we're going to see here, I won't spend too long here because you're going to see pretty much the same result. Um, I do think that as you stop the lenses down, there is a trend that I note in that the, the Tamron will continue to improve somewhat stop down. Its contrast will improve. Notice this area comparing the two. It's a little just more faded out here, and there's a little more definite um, edges, contrast edges um, on the Tamron result. And so overall, uh, the you know, the, there's not a huge difference. In Infinity, I definitely see more contrast and a little bit more detail on the Tamron lens. It seems to develop more contrast as it's stopped down, kind of a little bit more of a typical uh, landscape type lens as compared to the Sigma. F5.6, this is as far as I'll go. After this point, you start to see uh, some of the results of diffraction starting to set in on the 5D Mark IV body that this test's being done on. So here towards the middle, I would give a slight edge to the Tamron in that I think that there's a little bit more contrast. And so if you just look at this area where there's all this um, information here, I just see a little bit more uh, contrast distinction between those, those two here. I like that area better. How about in these uh, kind of the birch bark here? And um, you know, not a whole lot to distinguish them. However, I think that, come back, here in this area right here, there's maybe a little bit more contrast for the Tamron overall. But I mean, really there is, there's not much to distinguish these other than the fact that the, the Sigma has a bit of an advantage, I would say up to F2. Um, and then beyond that, there's really not much to uh, separate these lenses. And now everything is, is in focus here. And as we look at infinity, I still think there's a little bit more contrast for the Tamron lens as opposed to the Sigma. Now, I wanted to point out a phenomena that I've seen with a number of recent Sigma lenses and that they really are optimized for wide open performance. Now, this is a great thing in that um, a lot of times, uh, this is where a lot of photographers like to shoot these lenses. And so I really give Sigma a huge thumbs up at being very, very usable wide open. Here at f1.4, this is a very credible result. But I want you to look here I have on the right side. This is from the Sigma also. This is f5.6. And so uh, while you can look at other parts of the image that are impacted by depth of field, but if you look at the actual plane of focus, um, let's zoom back in on this again, you'll see that really between f1.4 and f5.6, there is a bit of a contrast improvement on the right and a little bit more texture information. But the truth of the matter is, is this is not a very different result between f1.4 and f1.6. And that really is impressive. Look at this tree here, lots of detail here. Is there really more in the f5.6? Ah. If there is, it's so slight as to be not, not hard, basically negligible for field use. So what this means is that really you can, for the most part, you can use aperture more about depth of field than for needing additional sharpness. You're going to get fantastic sharpness between f1.4 and f2, probably as much sharpness as what you would need in just about any kind of situation. Here's a case in point. Um, as I was st starting this hike, I noticed there was a family in the distance. They were actually getting some uh, photos done. So I just, you know, raised the camera and shot. Now, f1.4, that's obviously not the optimal uh, conditions for shooting this, but you can see that even at f1.4 and shooting at a distance, there's tons of information here. And, uh, you know, not everything's perfect. I can see a little bit of chromatic aberration here, but overall, there is lots of resolution really from wide open. Now, at the same time, uh, those of you that are considering the Sigma as opposed to uh, a lens like the Tamron, 
in a studio setting, really you're going to be shooting at apertures, I would say not really any smaller than f2.8. Now, you can shoot, in this case, this is shot at f2. And so obviously it's not because the image or lacks any kind of sharpness. I mean, that's a wonderfully sharp portrait there. And if we uh, zoom in, we can see that, um, you know, lots of detail and, and a beautiful uh, amount of focus. But if we look here, the hair on the right is in focus, the hair on the left is, is already out of focus. So I guess my point is, if you shoot studio type portraits, I don't know that you need an f1.4 lens. Um, I, if you're shooting outdoor environmental portraits, uh, I think the Sigma is sharp enough that you might be able to shoot full body portraits at f1.4 and you would get the advantage of f1.4 of having more separation from your background. But in a studio setting, I don't think that you want to shoot at wider apertures necessarily um, because you become your depth of field becomes too shallow. Here once again, we're at f2 and uh, so we were framed a little bit tighter and so you can see that the left eye is in focus, the right eye really is not. And, uh, and so, um, you know, and that might, there might be some artistic for value for that in some situations, but I think in a lot of cases, you would probably want both eyes to be in focus. Um, and this sample here, also shot at F2, um, you can see uh, zooming in here that, um, you know, just a beautiful amount of focus. Look at those uh, eye lashes there. And this, this one has been processed a little bit more and I've added a little more texture into it. But overall, I mean, plenty of sharpness. That's not really the issue. In this case here, this is shot at f2.8. And uh, here, this is probably a, a better result for a portrait type setting in the fact that all of her at least immediate facial features are in focus here. And of course, there's, you know, there's as much detail there and probably much more than what any of your clients would ever want. And so um, you're not going to discard this lens because it's not sharp enough. It is extremely sharp. Now, I thought that you might enjoy looking at uh, the difference between the Sigma and the mighty Zeiss Otis. And so, now I, I will give a small caveat in that these images were not shot at the same time. I reviewed the Otis basically exactly two years ago. And, uh, and so, however, I did shoot in some of the same environments, and so you can get an idea of the difference. So here, of course, we're shooting at f2. Framing is a little bit tighter um, on the Sigma lens here. Uh, what's interesting to me is that while um, I was a little bit closer um, for the Sigma shot, as you know, it's framed a little bit more widely for the Otis, the background is actually more diffused with the Otis image than it is with the Sigma. Now, the Otis is, it's a, it's a special lens. There's no question about it. Now, we see if we zoom into a pixel level that there's a, a big difference in um, having shot on the left side, I was shooting with a 6D with the Otis, and I've got a 5D Mark IV um, with the Sigma. And so we're going to be able to see more detail at a pixel level simply because we, we can zoom in kind of deeper into the image. And so uh, as far as the overall sharpness, I think that you're going to find that when it's tested out that the Sigma is not far off um, the Otis at all in terms of overall resolution. However, I don't think for real world shooting you're going to find that the Sigma is quite the match of the overall rendering um, and the look of the images. It, it's very hard to tangibly describe, but I will just say that the Otis is special. And um, the Milvis lens really is, is pretty much as sharp as what the Otis, not quite as sharp in the middle, but even sharper in the edges. But even the Milvis 85 is just not as special as the Otis. There's something about it that, as you can see, if you look at this, um, the Otis look is, is very frankly, it's magical in a way that the Sigma is not. And as I looked through, I took hundreds and hundreds of images with the Otis, and I just kind of refreshed and went back through them. And I came to a lot of the same conclusions, that the Otis lens still stands as being very special. However, if you're just looking for sharpness, I think that the Sigma is pretty much the match. Where it's not the match, however, is when it comes to overall contrast. The Otis lens has incredible bite to it in the sense that it's got a fantastic amount of micro contrast and, of course, lots of detail here in the image. I don't know that there's more detail than what I would see on the Sigma, but the overall contrast is different. And part of that comes down to the fact that the Otis lens 
has basically next to zil uh, chromatic aberrations, whereas the uh, sigma lens obviously has a fair bit of chromatic aberration. So here I tried to recreate this shot that I did with the Otis um, to kind of give you an idea of that overall contrast or micro contrast. So if you'll see, um, obviously the plane of focus, this is at f1.4, for both lenses is quite shallow. Um, but what you'll find on the Otis is that text is like where it's in focus is perfectly dark and inky. Whereas you can, um, you know, it's it's reasonably dark here with the uh, the art series lens, but because of that chromatic aberration, it is not as inky looking. Um, you know, it's just got kind of that purple note to it that um, you know it it just kind of sets it apart. And so the the Otis rendering, and of course, it's not the exact same light. It's basically the same situation, but not the exact same light, but there's just something about the Otis lens that, you know, is just that extra bit of special. Um, that being said, I think, you know, the Otis is incredibly expensive. I mean, it, it, it costs about three and a half times as much as what the, the Sigma lens, and of course, it doesn't have autofocus. And so, I mean, it's, it's not a lens for everybody, but, you know, you'll probably hear a lot of people call this new Sigma lens an Otis killer. I'm not frankly ready to go there. I think that the Oda still remains something very special. So as you can see, out in the real world, things are a little bit more complicated than what it may seem when you look at a chart test. And I wouldn't be surprised if this new Sigma lens charts very well. But um, out in the real world, both in the, you know, the difference in levels of sharpness is, is really pretty minute in a lot of the very excellent lenses that we're seeing. And I've seen a trend this year where I've reviewed a number of really, really good lenses that um, you know weren't at the same time noticeably superior when it comes to sharpness as compared to other alternatives. The reality is, is that there is a ton of sharp lenses out there on the market right now. And so ultimately, I think it comes down to feature set. And uh, that's really kind of what I'll be looking at in my final review of the Sigma where I break things down, autofocus performance, and uh, looking at the overall kind of package. Because it's hard to take any one of these isolated things and draw a real conclusion from it. At the same time, I think that if you are someone who is personally interested in the Sigma lens, there's not going to be much that I show uh, during these various examinations that should turn you off. It's really an excellent lens. It has great sharpness wide open. Um, it's perfectly usable in just about every kind of situation. And so if you don't mind the, um, the hefty size and weight of the lens, I think that you'll be pretty pleased overall with the images it's capable of producing. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you want to take a look down below, you can find my ongoing image gallery, also a link to the playlist here where um, I'm covering this lens along with the new 12-24 f4 art lens as well. If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.